There are only a few rappers today who can say they've actually changed the course of hip hop. And Too Short is definitely one of them. He's known as the first rapper to spit rhymes focused on pimping, sexuality, and the drug game. And his most famous word has become ingrained in hip hop music. From selling tapes out of the trunk of his car in Oakland to influencing generations of rappers, Too Short has remained true to his style since he first stepped onto the rap scene back in 1983. Too Short was born Todd Anthony Shaw on April 28, 1966. He was raised in South Central Los Angeles by his parents who were both accountants. His mother described him as being a fast learner as most things came easy to him. He taught himself to read music and play the drums at the age of 11 and he would listen to and study old records from the 70s for hours at a time. In 1980, at the age of 14, he moved to Oakland, California. He enrolled in Fremont High School, and soon his brother and friends started calling him short because he was shorter than everyone else in the class. He later added two to the beginning of his name after watching the story of a gangster named Too Sweet. Oakland was a different world compared to Los Angeles. Where LA was known for its bloods and crips, Oakland at the time was known for its hustlers and its pimps. The movie The Mac, which had been filmed completely in Oakland and based on a man who wanted to become the city's biggest pimp, had been released just a few years prior to Too Short's arrival. And although The Mac was just a movie, it closely mirrored the reality of what Oakland life was like during the 70s and the 80s. Pimpin' was made to look glamorous. Men with pimp hats and a pimp walk, being surrounded by beautiful women, was a common sight in Oakland and Too Short had a front row seat to all of it. Too Short's first year living in Oakland was also the first year he'd heard rap music. New York rap songs played daily on his boombox radio, and with his background in music, it wasn't long before he decided he could rap too. However, instead of talking about New York, he would talk about Oakland. The hardcore lyrics were instant. His first rhymes talked about street survival and hustlers, and of course, pimping. In 1981, the 15-year-old Too Short took a year off of high school to pursue his career as a rapper. He got some recording equipment, teamed up with the rap partner Freddie B, and the two started making music at Too Short's house. After recording their first tape, they went to a park known to be the place for selling drugs and sold their tape to a drug dealer for $5. And from there, it didn't stop. They went out every day to sell their tapes, either walking or taking the bus to every park in Oakland where drug dealers hung out. They even recorded rap tapes they called special requests for certain kingpins around town that wanted personalized raps made about them and the neighborhoods they controlled. These tapes sold for $20 each. In between selling tapes, Too Short DJed and performed at house parties, so it didn't take long for word to spread about who he was. He was the first rapper in Oakland with X-rated lyrics, and by 1984, all the town's biggest pimps and drug dealers vouched for him. That same year is when Too Short would first record his trademark word. It came during a skit at the beginning of one of his songs where he was pretending to smoke cocaine. Now, 1984 was before the crack era, and smoking cocaine was the party drug and not looked down upon like it is today. In fact, it was considered a high-class party drug. Everyone who was rich and in the party scene did it, and those who didn't wished they could. Too Short, who was 18 at the time, wasn't rich, yet, and although he had made good money selling his tapes, it wasn't enough to party and do drugs with high rollers. So, he pretended to. In the middle of one of his skits, a woman he was smoking with tried to steal from him, causing him to call her out her name. And that was it. His most famous word was recorded, a word he has since used in almost every rap song he's ever made. What's my favorite word? By 1985, Too Short had finished high school and was working with 75 Girls, a label ran by producer Dean Hodges. He had impressed Dean Hodges' brother at a show in Oakland where a crowd of 5,000 knew every word to his songs from his street tapes, without him having a radio hit or even a real album out. Too Short started recording full-time with 75 Girls, and between 1985 and 1987, he recorded Don't Stop Rapping, Players, and Raw, Uncut, and X-Rated. Too Short didn't make much money during his years with 75 Girls, but he did learn the music business. So in 1987, he left to start his own company, Dangerous Music. But he and his partner lacked the money needed to start a recording company. He would eventually link up with Ted Bohannon, an Oakland hustler who was well known in the streets and had plenty of money to invest in Too Short's Dangerous Music imprint. 
Ted Bohannon spared no expense when it came to recording Two Short's album. He funded Short's entire project, paying for studio sessions and photo shoots. His investment made Too Short even more famous than he already was, and helped to solidify Too Short's pimp image with the album Born to Mac that came out in 1987 and featured the cult classic Freaky Tales, which sold more than 60,000 units independently. Around this same time, Too Short started the group The Dangerous Crew that would later evolve into him, Aunt Banks, Goldie, and Father Dom. The four would stay together for years, creating some of Too Short's greatest hits. As Too Short's success grew, the big record labels began to take notice, and in less than a year of releasing Freaky Tales, Jive Records came calling, offering him a seven-album deal. The deal catapulted Too Short into mainstream spotlight, making him a millionaire by the age of 21. During his time with Jive, Too Short released 14 albums, six went platinum and four gold. He did songs with E-40 and Tupac, and was making music so fast that he would deliver finished albums to Jive before even being sent his recording budget. By this time, Too Short was a Bay Area superstar, the voice of Oakland, and the first rapper to put the town on the map. In 1989, he went on the Straight Outta Compton tour with N.W.A. Together, the rap lyrics of both acts were so controversial, many of their concerts were shut down due to parents protesting outside the venue, and police officers issuing citations for obscene lyrics. But his explicit rhymes didn't stop. He continued rapping about promiscuity and the pimp culture, and he paired it with the loudest bass anyone had ever heard. But Too Short's success came with downfalls. In his early years of music, he was involved in rap battles with fellow Oakland rappers MC Hammer and The Loonies, both of which were later squashed. And in 1995, he was accused of intentionally shutting down Summer Jam, an annual Bay Area concert, because of rap beef. His success also caused a rift between old business partners, as money and the music business got in between some of his longtime friendships. Run-ins with the police became an everyday thing for Too Short, as Oakland's law enforcement watched his every move, assuming he was a drug dealer, and pulling him over to search for drugs and weapons whenever they saw him. He recorded multiple songs about the police harassment in Oakland, and about the city itself, which had taken a turn for the worse as the crack epidemic had now swept in changing everything and destroying neighborhoods. There's a shooting war in Oakland, a deadly battle for turf between drug dealers, police, and citizens. Drug use in Oakland between 1992 and 93 was so out of control, it created a drug war. Homicide rates in the town were at an all-time high, and Too Short witnessed friends who used to hustle together turn against each other as the city became a war zone. In 1993, this caused Too Short to leave Oakland, and he moved to Atlanta. Atlanta had been a spot he'd often went to party and vacation. The ATL vibe was different than that on the West Coast, and after teaming up with Little John, he was able to just focus and make music. But moving to Atlanta caused even more controversy, as some in Oakland accused him of abandoning his city, and the biggest Bay Area radio stations refused to play any of his new music. Despite the backlash, Too Short never stopped rapping about Oakland during his time in Atlanta, and he had gained a whole new fan base. While he was never a big name in New York, his hits with Lil Jon introduced him to a brand new audience, and he was soon doing collabs with Biggie, Jay-Z, Eric Sermon, Lil' Kim, and more. Too Short had the whole world singing along to his X-rated lyrics, but ironically, even though he's known as a pimp rapper, he's far too busy making music to be an actual pimp in real life. And he has said that although his lyrics may be considered misogynistic, he does not go around in his daily life disrespecting women. He does have a lot of love for women, so much so that he's never been married, and he says he's lost count of the actual number of women he's been with, admitting that many of his songs come from personal experiences. After leaving Jive Records in 2008, he went on to do four more albums independently, and to date, he's recorded 21 full-length albums. Too Short has remained true to his player style in every album he's ever recorded, never switching up or writing the newest wave in hip-hop, and his fans can't get enough. Now in his 50s, he can still easily sell out shows where the entire crowd can be heard yelling out. He's also taken on the role of mentor, helping up-and-coming rappers navigate through the music business. And at the age of 53, he became a first-time father. A certified California legend, Too Short has been in the rap game for over 35 years, with no plans of stopping anytime soon. 
which makes sense when you consider the fact that his very first album back in 1985 was called Don't Stop Rapping. <laughs>